Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome uh, to the Cricket Happening Show today. And in this part of the uh, Cricket Happening Show, uh, well, uh, the semi-finals, today was the semi-finals of the T20 World Cup. And what a shame here, uh, where the chase was really, really becoming very, very exciting with West Indies uh, requiring another 80 runs uh, of the next six overs. So we are looking at 37 balls, but uh, the persons who were at the crease at that particular moment uh, was uh, Marlon, uh, I think it was Marlon Samuels, not out on 18, and Darren Sammy, the captain, who has been a great finisher in this uh, particular um, uh, T20 World Cup. But uh, what a shame here that there was a heavy, there was heavy rain here uh, at uh, Shittagong and finally the match was called off and uh, really really I feel uh, pretty sad to see that you know this particular semi-final which is a very very important fixture uh, has ended definitely in the victory definitely Sri Lanka deserve credit no doubt about it Sri Lanka have gone into the semi uh, into the finals of the T20 World Cup so Sri Lanka have made it once again they made it last time and this time the last time it was Sri Lanka versus West Indies but this time uh, West Indies are out, uh, though the defending champions uh, of the T20 World Cup are out, but they were out by the Duckworth Lewis method and that was decided by 27 runs. I thought it was a really, really uh, pretty sad to see uh, such an event happening and as I said, a reserve day has to be kept in place uh, because this is very, very important fixture. Well, I'll come back to that later today. I'm really, really short of time, so I'm going to just wrap up this uh, semi-final match. Well, it all uh, started with um, actually Sri Lanka batting first. The, the luck of the toss was with Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka won the toss uh, and uh, elected to bat. Sri Lanka electing to bat, they made one change. They brought Sikugya Prasanna uh, into the team. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, yeah, they, 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 they went and um, uh, I'm just trying to see who they dropped actually. So, but Sikugya Prasanna came into the team and West Indies went with an unchanged sign. Uh, well, as far as the start was concerned, as usual, uh, in fact, uh, Sri Lanka had a good start today, a very, very strong start, especially uh, by Kushal Pereira, who started uh, the, the bowling attack for West Indies. It was headed by Samuel Badri, uh, the right arm leg spinner, along with Krishmar Santoki. Uh, and both of them, uh, in fact, uh, um, Badri was uh, definitely carted for sixes by uh, Kushal Pereira on the onside. Uh, he also hit one on the offside. That was of the bowling, I think, Krishmar Santoki. And uh, Pereira uh, contributed uh, 26 runs. In fact, it was a partnership uh, which, was, which yielded 41 runs uh, for the first wicket, which was a very good partnership. It was a very strong partnership. So they had a strong start here in the semi-finals, uh, Sri Lanka. But uh, Kushal Pereira uh, finally was dismissed. They were looking very good, Sri Lanka, with four overs. They had 41 on the board. Uh, with Kushal Pere around 26, but that was the time, uh, as has happened every time, Krishmar Santoki uh, bowled uh, a delivery, which actually uh, Kushal Pereira uh, tried to uh, tried to actually uh, tap it, uh, but actually missed the line, and he was uh, clean bowled by Santoki uh, for 26. There was definitely a change of pace, so he was gone for 26 of 12 balls, with two fours and two six, which made the score 41 for one. Uh, in walked in Mahela Jayavardhane to join Thilgadne Dilshan. Dilshan was also looking good. In fact, I just wanted to tell you that, um, uh, in fact, um, um, uh, Mahela Jayavardhane joined. Dilshan was the one who actually started the attacking uh, by hitting a boundary uh, in the initial stages. And Dilshan was uh, looking good. He was looking uh, pretty good. Mahela Jayavardhane, uh, without even facing a ball, was unfortunately run out. Now, Thilgadne Dilshan uh, was the man who actually played the ball. But uh, Darren Swamy, the West Indian captain, swooped down at the point region and he just came uh, absolutely flying for the ball and he picked up the ball in one fell swoop, uh, bullseye, hit the stumps and Myla Jayavardhani was actually late to start when Dilshan actually called him for a run, was found wanting and Jayavardhani, uh, what, an, what an end to that innings for Jayavardhani in the sense uh, he couldn't even face a ball in the semi-final and he was run out for a duck. So suddenly the Sri Lankan innings, which was looking good on 41 for no loss, became 41 for 2. Kumar Sangakara came in. As you know, Kumar Sangakara has been in some wretched form in this T20 World Cup. 
Um, he has not picked up much runs at all, and he was really even not. He has not even had a single 25 or 30 to his name. And he came in, and Sangakara. Well, he couldn't really, really get his bearings right at all. And uh, Samuel Badri uh, came in and bowled a delivery with Sangakara. Very, very. Uh, unfortunately, I would say that uh, he really gave a very tame catch to Samuel Badri, accepted it gleefully, and uh, Sangakara was walking. And that was, as I said, that been a wretched form for uh, uh, Kumar Sangakara in the T20 World Cup. That made it 49 for three, and suddenly West Indies were coming back into the game uh, by getting three quick wickets uh, at the, uh, on the on the in the 40 mark. Uh, so that was 49 for 3 in the 7th over. Uh, now Dilshan was joined in by Tirimane and uh, then slowly uh, they started uh, uh, you know, playing but by the time Sunil Narin was also introduced into the attack and Sunil Narin as you know is a very very tight bowler. He was making life very very difficult for the Sri Lankan batsmen. They couldn't get him off the square at all. He was pretty difficult to really deal with him. Uh, and uh, well after that uh, uh, and after that uh, Tilkan Dilshan uh, once again um, with some very uh, good fielding uh, which was done by the West Indies uh, this time uh, it was uh, the turn of uh, Lendl Simmons to pick up the ball and uh, throw the stumps uh, at uh, in one single action and Dilshan was the victim uh, out run out for 39 of as many balls with two fours and one six so that made the score 91 for four uh, after 14 overs in the 13.3 overs after that it definitely required uh, someone to really stay at the crease. Uh, that came in the form of uh, Angela Matthews and Lairo Thiramane uh, who was staying there but also uh, not losing any opportunities to play their strokes. Uh, he went after the bowling of uh, Andre Russell uh, who got a, a bit of uh, karting. Also Krishmar Santoki came in for some tap uh, and um, well uh, so and both of them what they did is they took the Sri Lankan total uh, to uh, almost you know um, I mean, no, actually uh, what happened was it was a, a very a brief partnership uh, between uh, uh, Lai Ruthirmane and the Sri Lankan captain Angelo Matthews, but then Lai Ruthirmane was a victim of the bowling of Santogi playing a forceful stroke on the offside, was, uh, caught Simmons bowled Santogi for 44 of 35 balls with 3 fours and 2 sixes, and finally it was left to Angelo Matthews to really, really club the West Indies bowling all around the park to collect a very quick 540 of just 23 balls with three fours and two sixes. He hit two sixes in the last over, but he was uh, caught brilliantly by Dwayne Bravo of the final ball of the innings. And Sri Lankan innings, um, uh, really, really, um, you know, really recovering, I would say, due to those uh, very big blows by Angelo Matthews, uh, went on to have 164 six of that 20 overs, which was a very good score. Uh, now, looking at the West Indies bowling, Samuel Badri, four overs, no made one for 23. Uh, he has been the real talk as far as uh, the World Cup is concerned. He has been bowling superbly. Sunil Nareen, four overs, no made and none for 20. It was very difficult to really get the ball off the square. Uh, Santogi, four overs, was very costly, two for 46. The other person who was costly was Andre Russell, who was three overs, league 37 runs and a wicket. And Marlon Samuels bowled four overs for 23. Gale bowling one over for nine runs. So West Indies uh, started off their effort. And, uh, well, uh, Dwayne Smith uh, made his intentions known uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty much at the beginning as he, he carted Duan Kulashekara for a four of the first ball he faced and then he went on to smite him for a six. Uh, and Chris Gale, well he was really struggling, I mean Chris Gale was really struggling, uh, he was not really able to uh, get his timing right and he was really uh, tied up by Sachitra Senanayake, the Radha Moss spinner and uh, finally Lasit Malinga came in as uh, the first change and Lasit Malinga immediately provided the breakthrough as you know he was the captain of the team and immediately provided the breakthrough uh, by beating a Gale uh, with some change of pace and he was clean bowled by Malinga for three and again uh, the change of pace uh, uh, sent the other opener Dwayne Smith who was looking uh, pretty good at that particular stage when Malinga once again beat him uh, with a ball which was uh, uh, really there was a change in pace once again and Dwayne Smith this time was the victim as he was clean bowled by Malinga for 17 of 14 balls with 1-4 and 1-6 and the West Indies innings had suddenly uh, started uh, once again uh, I mean it was looking a bit shaky at 28 for 2 and then there was more trouble for West Indies as Lendl Simmons uh, Sekuge Prasene was actually bowling his uh, first ball uh, in T20 cricket in the sense T20 World Cup and here he is coming into the team uh, immediately with his very first ball in the T20 World Cup uh, had Lendl Simmons LBW with a real leg spinner 
with Vendersman trying to actually uh, cut it, uh, but uh, probably he was uh, too late on his stroke and the ball was a bit thicker and it went on to hit his pad and up went the umpire's finger. Lendl Simmons was walking, LBW ball Prasanna for four and suddenly West Indies were in trouble at 34 for three. After that it was Marlon Samuels and Dwayne Bravo to crease. Uh, Marlon Samuels, well uh, he was not really really able to play his strokes uh, with, the, uh, with the same uh, touch and class that he has. Uh, he, was, uh, he was really kept quiet uh, by the Sri Lankan bowlers. Uh, he was not finding it. Uh, he was finding it difficult to really uh, score of the Sri Lankan bowlers. But Dwayne Bravo uh, was definitely showing all those um, uh, strokes that he unveiled against Pakistan uh, by really playing some beautiful strokes. He hit a beautiful six, uh, carting it over extra cover. Uh, I think the bowler was uh, Kulashekara when he was uh, carved, and that is the time uh, the rain got. The rains also started falling, and uh, suddenly uh, things were not looking good. And uh, Dwayne Bravo. Uh, was the victim in the sense Dane Bravo was looking good and that was the time the West Indies required an equation of probably uh, 12 to 13 runs per over and Dane Bravo was really really uh, getting on to the Sri Lankan bowlers but unfortunately for Dane Bravo uh, he was gone as Kulashekara uh, got a ball on the I mean on his leg stump uh, Dwayne Bravo trying to flick the delivery flicked it into the hands of Jayavardhane and after contributing a very good 30 of just 19 deliveries 3 fours and 1 six was walking back to the pavilion and finally, as Darren Sammy, the West Indian captain, strode on to the uh, strider on to the crease uh, to join Marlon Samuels, who was uh, really struggling today, uh, not out on 18 with one boundary. Uh, the rain gods uh, started intervening, and finally, uh, it was a real deluge here at the Shittagong, and the umpires decided that play would be called off. So, as I said, what a shame uh, that the semi-final match had to end in this way, but unfortunately, that was the case. And well, that was it. So that was the reason. Uh, West Indies will require another 80 runs of the uh, of the next uh, I would say uh, 37 deliveries. It was quite a possibility because uh, Darren Sammy is, as you know, he has been a great finisher in this T20 World Cup, and uh, Marlon Samuels uh, could have probably have uh, really really uh, got going probably, and things would have been pretty different uh, because they did sit, uh, still have some uh, good hitters to come like Dennis Ramadan, the wicketkeeper, and Andre Russell, but uh, unfortunately that was not the case. The another 80 runs to get, uh, play was called off and that by the Duckworth Lewis method Sri Lankans were declared the victors and they marched into the finals of the T20 World Cup for the second time in succession. Uh, well, as far as the bowling, uh, the bowling was concerned, Kulisekra 2.5 overs, no maidens, 1 for 22, Senen Ike 2 overs for 6 runs, Malinga bowled 2 overs, no maiden, 2 for 5, Rangana Herat uh, completed his quota today, 4 overs, 1 for 27, Sakuge Prasanna, 2 overs, no maiden, 1 for 15, and Angelo Matthews, 1 over for 4 runs, and Angelo Matthews for his uh, big hitting towards the end was named man of the match. Well, dear fans and subscribers, so tomorrow uh, we will have the we will know who would be the which would be the team which will be taking on Sri Lanka in the finals on Sunday on 6th of April and that will be decided when India and South Africa clash tomorrow in the second semi-finals of the T20 World Cup 2014. Well, that wraps up my cricket happening show for today. Thanks for your company and thanks for regularly watching cricket happenings. Your host Ram will see you tomorrow with the second semi-final report. Until then, it's goodbye for the day. Thank you.